No pigment in his skin. Thin yellow hairs were nice or yellow like a cat. Long yellow hair, pallid white skin, and glaring yellow eyes. The alligator slaying swamp creature that Bray Wyatt described back in 2015 seemingly sets up the character he would become in 2019. A beast of unimaginable strength with a maddening howl but also a caring streak as it did not seek to harm the young Bray Wyatt. In fact, it was a part of Bray Wyatt. You are the man in the woods. Whether this twisted visage is a reflection of the Eater of Worlds, or the creation of a frightened mind, or just another fabrication from a master storyteller, the bender of words, is hard to tell. The fiendish implications of this ghost story are hard to miss though. But was this a masterstroke of foreshadowing, or was the fiend just a retcon of some other idea that would have played out as part of cult leader Bray Wyatt's lore. That's what I'll be trying to work out in this video as I go panning for truth in the swampy waters of Bray's elaborate lore. I'm Laurie, hailing from parts fun known, and this is The Fiend Explained. Getting to the bottom of who or what The Fiend actually is isn't a very easy task. There's no official history for him, no necronomicon of where the demon came from, if he even is a demon. WWE.com's bio for the character says that the superstar known as The Fiend Bray Wyatt seems to have stepped out of the collective population's nightmares and into our reality. And though we may never know the full extent of his madness, what is certain is that he never forgets and is out to evoke an unmerciful reign of terror on all who dare let him in. The new look Wyatt seemed to retain some of his more unsettling and unstable characteristics, and soon he would reveal his terrifying alter ego known as the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Complete with a gnarled face mask that weaved its way into every WWE fan's worst dreams, Wyatt made clear that this new nightmare was just beginning. And that's all we get, little more than hints from WWE's superstar grimoire. For all of Wyatt's demands for us to let him in, he's been keeping us out of what's actually happening within the walls of the Funhouse, offering no clear narrative origins, and instead just letting the hints and the legend and the Easter eggs pile up like some sort of pre-patch Animal Crossing. <laughs> So needless to say, there are going to be some logical leaps of imagination as we explore the mounting mythology of Bray Wyatt. Now, an obvious place to start is the man in the woods story, which is why the video started there. Uploaded to WWE's YouTube channel for Halloween 2015, this ghost story predates The Fiend by a good four years, but as I said up top, contains a description of a monster that appears eerily similar. And it's a video that a lot of WWE fans have rediscovered and taken as proof that The Fiend character was in the works for quite some time. Something that was mentioned to me when I spoke to Kyle Scarborough, the sketch artist who helped Bray to design The Fiend's mask. I remember watching that, fans online started to notice that the, the similarities in the story, uh, I believe it was long blonde or yellow hair and you know, these bright colored eyes. And it wasn't until a fan pointed out the similarities between that and The Fiend that I thought, oh wow. So I kind of learned how far back his ideas are honestly at the same pace everyone else did. For fun, um, just on paper and just doing some digital manipulation stuff, I, I did a kind of a caricature-esque sketch of the Fiend, if he was slightly more modified to look like the, the description from that ghost story you're talking about. And I threw it up online like, hey, you know, Fiend, the man in the woods. The amount of people that was getting messaging me or even commenting, I think, saying, I knew it. It's been confirmed. I'm just drawn for fun. Chances are that the man in the woods is just another scare in Wyatt's arsenal, another myth from the master manipulator. But there is always the possibility that Wyatt expected to morph into this swamp creature at some point in his run before deciding that the cult leader character had fully run its course. Instead, I reckon it's likely a loose end that Bray Wyatt decided to tie into his reformed and reimagined wrestling persona when Firefly Funhouse hit screens. Not only taking that striking image to become the look of the fiend, but also weaving in a bunch of other callbacks and references to that ghost story, like the sound of the fiend. 
The harrowing howl of the man in the woods forces Bray to clap his hands to his ears lest they bleed. Likewise, each appearance of the fiend is accompanied by a screeching wail that drowns out all other sound in the arena, while the character itself brings its hands to its ears, first and foremost to listen to the angel or devil on its shoulder telling it to hurt or to heal, but also mirroring that moment from four years earlier. So it could just be an example of accidental foreshadowing or just a clever callback, or it could have been the plan all along. That's kind of half the fun here. And it's a tricky little mechanic that Bray has played with quite a lot during this period of reinvention, teasing greater meaning to seemingly irrelevant details. Back in May 2019, Bray decided to illuminate his fireflies with an overlooked Easter egg from the funhouse. Fun game time! Bet you didn't know that in 2015 I did eight consecutive backstage promos where one sentence didn't belong in each of them, but together they make up a secret message. No one ever found it. You guys never look hard enough. First one to get it wins a prize. What makes you smile? I know you're listening. Let me in. We don't belong here! What happened to you was such a tragedy. Limbo is no place for a soul like yours. I believe I've found the answer. The angel with the burned wings is waving you on. And it turns out that each line taken from those eight promos would make up the title and the theme of an episode during season one of Firefly Funhouse. And I don't know about you, but it also sounds to me like one side of a conversation. And this is just a theory. But do you think it's the fiend talking to Bray Wyatt? Now, the most obvious clue is the voice asking, let, let me, me in, which is the fiend's catchphrase. But the other reason I think this could be the fiend talking to Wyatt are the lines, what happened to you was such a tragedy. Limbo is no place for a soul like yours. Now, the tragedy could be seen as Wyatt's career so far, marred as it was by high profile loss after high profile loss, an act that was actually so over with the crowd, but never given the push by management to truly reach the stratosphere. And Limbo could be a reference to that too, stuck neither here nor there, somewhere between main eventer and stooge. WWE clearly obsessed with continually using Bray Wyatt but never actually giving him the push he needs. But it could also be a reference to that transitional period between cult leader Bray leaving screens and Funhouse Wyatt emerging from the shadows. A dark period where the fiend found him. Because as Bray himself said in the build to his match with John Cena at WrestleMania 36, at some point he stopped trying to shut the voices out and he decided to start listening to them. He let them in. So it begs the question, is the fiend just a voice in Bray's head or is it an entity that's taken up residence in the vessel of Bray Wyatt? Because Wyatt's former gimmick seemed deeply rooted in religious iconography, a preacher talking about angels and demons and all that. From the crucifix pose in the middle of the ring to name checking Milton's paradise lost in the build to the match with the Undertaker to the name of his prophet. Sister Abigail. Now the motherly hand of the Wyatt family was a figure shrouded in mystery. Bray always said that she was a real person who took him in and cared for him. Randy Orton said that he found her grave when he burned the Wyatt compound to the ground, though Bray then later said that she was alive and well during his feud with Finn Balor. That was before the whole Norman Bates, ooh, uh, mother thing that thankfully never actually came to fruition. But Bray cosplaying his dead sister did seem to suggest that Abigail was a figure who was only alive in Bray's mind. Though we did actually get a glimpse of Abigail in the WrestleMania 36 match in the Funhouse, though you could argue that because the Funhouse exists in some sort of other space, it's kind of unlikely that the Abigail that we saw there would be quote unquote real. Now in religious terms, Abigail was the name of one of the seven Jewish female prophets, which may just seem like a coincidence considering that Wyatt's Abigail was said to soothe him with prophecy of his reign to come and helped him to believe that he was a god incarnate. And I wouldn't usually put loads of stock in connections like that because loads of names come from the Bible. You've got Adam, Mark, Benjamin, Grace, Daniel, Samuel, or, or Samael, and that's 
actually one of the reasons I put a little bit more stock in this theory because when Bray was feuding with Matt Hardy he took a little dip in the lake of reincarnation and came out cleansed of many of his heelish tendencies and to announce that he was a changed man he proclaimed understand something plain and simple to me Abigail was a delicious poison an intoxicating overwhelming poison but Abigail don't live here no more I am Samael. Now, Samael is the name of an archangel with grim and destructive duties. In Jewish beliefs, he is the angel of death and also a fallen angel or an angel with burned wings. Now, Samael is often lumped in with Satan due to his fallen angel status and his reaping duties, but he is also said to be the Lord of the fifth heaven. So simultaneously, good and bad, sort of stuck in limbo between good and evil. Now, where have we seen something like that before? Add to all of that religious significance the fact that fiend literally means evil spirit or demon, and the fact that the door to the Firefly Funhouse is marked with abandon hope, all ye who exit here, paraphrasing the inscription of the gates of hell in Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy, and then the personal hell that John Cena went through in the Funhouse at Mania, you add that all up and it kind of seems like Bray's innocent little kids TV show might exist in Inferno. Or at least potentially purgatory, because if you're abandoning hope to exit, you'd probably be entering hell. Thing is though, for all this talk of angels and demons and monsters and kings, Bray has actually undercut this mysticism on multiple occasions before. At one point, even teasing his own insanity. During that period of limbo before the Firefly Funhouse version of Bray debuted, he posted very sparsely on social media, but when he did, it was cryptic and obscure. And to make matters worse, he deleted a lot of it after he re-debuted. Around October, after he disappeared from screens, he wrote, Day 23, subject is showing signs of progress at times. Violent outbursts are commonplace, spewing threats at our staff in multiple languages and reciting passages from Bible. Seemingly suggesting that after disappearing from WWE TV, Bray Wyatt was incarcerated in a psychiatric institute. Then in December, he posted again, seemingly having made progress with his rehabilitation. I am not a god. I never was. I'm sorry I said it. I was wrong. I know the true God now and all his power. I feel that I am forgiven for all the wickedness I have caused. My soul is clean now. My mind is clear. I see what I did wrong, what was done to me. They took it all. I have so many things to fix. I realize that I was sick. My mind doesn't work like other people's. It gets lost and attached to ideals that are unrealistic and poisonous. My next journey will be to find my true calling. So when Bray popped back onto screens with a wild man beard, neatly trimmed his hair tied back and a cozy looking red sweater on, it seemed like the rehabilitation and reformation of Bray Wyatt was complete. But now with the fiend running rampant, it seems like he just found a different voice to listen to. One that is setting him after those that took it all from him, one that has put him on a mission of revenge. So again, what if this is just all in Bray's head? What if the Firefly Funhouse just exists in Bray's mind space? Whatever that is, his mind palace. And that would be why it's filled with Easter eggs and references. It would be why the puppets are named after his first gimmick or the inspiration for his last gimmick or Sister Abigail. It's why we see her properly for the first time in the match with John Cena at Mania because it's inside his head because that might be the only place she's ever existed. After all, in the real world, it was Bray who was the man in the woods. It was Bray who was Sister Abigail. It was Bray who's even been an angel with burned wings. Wyatt's got this big tribal wing-shaped tattoo on his back, one that got flogged when he was Husky Harris. Randy Orton burned down the Wyatt compound and Sister Abigail's grave, an aspect of Bray himself, and the thing that was lifting him to ascension, the thing that was making him a god. And now, he's also the fiend. The answer is the creature that lives behind my eyes. It all comes back to Bray Wyatt, Abigail, Samael, The Fiend. They're all just masks. 
something to hide behind. As Bray himself tweeted after his loss to Goldberg at Super Showdown this year, life is a circle. No matter what beast you make of yourself or how bright one side is, inevitably the dark side comes again. But the beauty of the circle is, round we go. Now, the beast you make of yourself could be a reference to or paraphrasing of a quote by famed British linguist Samuel Johnson, who said, he who makes a beast of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man. Bray's new character is one obsessed with his past. What happened to you was such a tragedy. Who wants to redeem his career. Limbo is no place for a soul like yours. And has become a masked beast in order to reconcile the pain within him for his past failings. Let me in. But then again, if it's all in Bray's bonds, how does John Cena go there for the WrestleMania 36 match? How does Seth Rollins burn it down? How does The Fiend teleport around? How does it drag Seth Rollins down to hell? How does Bray and The Fiend appear in the same segment on SmackDown? Frankly, there are just too many arcane shenanigans going on for this to just purely be the psychotic delusions of a troubled cult leader. I mean, even the Tiger King Joe Exotic's deluded ravings about that bitch Carol Baskin had some sort of grounding in reality because her husband did in fact go missing. So really, explaining the lore of The Fiend is actually kind of impossible. Episode 2 and this series is already a bust. But then again, that's kind of the point because the conflicting origins of the fiend, his abilities, his reality are all what make the character so intriguing. And it's basically always been this way for Bray Wyatt too because the rambling promos of cult leader era Bray often just diverged, doubled back and then folded in on themselves, retreading the same ground so many times that the true path forward was often obscured. Now I said in episode one that DC's Joker was a major influence on the design of the fiend and there are certainly some character traits the two share, but this mud history could be another. Because of the nature of comics and as writers take over new books and they put their own spin on it, rehashing, retconning and retelling, the Joker's origins have basically become a folk tale. And like those traditional stories that are passed on by word of mouth, every single teller has a slightly different version. But what do you do when the tale being told is autobiographical? I want to know how I got these scars. You want to know how I got them? Speaking of which, you know how I got these scars? In Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, Heath Ledger's Joker addresses the elephant in the room, you know, why he looks the way he does, on three separate occasions throughout the film, telling a different story each time. In the first, he was disfigured by his abusive father for being too serious. In the second, he mutilated his own face as a show of solidarity with his wife who was scarred by loan sharks. And the third time, he begins to tell Christian Bale's Batman an altogether different backstory, though it's cut short by the Dark Knight flinging him from the edge of a building. Now the first two tales tell of a man who could be sympathised with, who wasn't always a freak, while the third, unfinished tale, might be closer to the truth. Because the scars are a mask, something that marks him as different, makes people uncomfortable, whether through fear of being caught staring or because of the unsettling permagrin they give him. They are ultimately another unknown for people to fear, an unanswered question along with why are you doing this? And it's that mystery of where he came from that the Joker wields and weaponizes to sow terror on the streets of Gotham. And funnily enough, Bray equally has been the orator of his own origins from those rambling promos on Raw and SmackDown giving you insight into the backwards glory of his existence, all the way up to the Firefly Funhouse where he's the one hosting you, telling you what's going on. And then every little detail that doesn't add up from asylums to angels, every incongruity unsettles. Because it defies the human desire to know a concrete origin, a true story to be able to package Bray Wyatt up in a neat little box and put him on a shelf and know where he is. And instead, this is where the true horror lies because that is not necessarily what you get here. Because admit it, finding out the exact lore and origin of the fiend is probably why you clicked the video.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and diving into the mysteries of The Fiend. If you did like it and you know someone else whose day it might brighten in a sort of scary clown mask kind of way, then why not share it around? Because that would really, really help us out. So next time on Explain, for the final part in this three-part series on The Fiend, we're going to be diving into the execution of the character and how WWE and Bray Wyatt have presented him as a horror movie monster. So subscribe to PFK so you're notified when that goes live, and I will see you next time on Parts Fun Known.